This is EDUC 4703U, Teaching and Learning, Problem-Based Learning. This is Session 4, Video Clip 3, and the title of this video clip is Theory and Structure of PBLOs, Part 3. The analysis questions for this video clip are as follows. Number one, what is the purpose of the contextual information that should be provided on page two of a PBLO? Number two, what should be included in the contextual information? Number three, what is the purpose of the theoretical information that should be provided on page three of a PBLO? And number four, what should be included in the theoretical information? You and a small group of colleagues in this course will be producing a PBLO based on a topic of your choosing. When the topic has been chosen, you will need to collect contextual information to be included on page two of the PBLO. In order to ensure that you will have relevant information to present, you will need to collect a large amount of material. Sample materials listed below form the basis of the scope of the information collected for the argumentation in biology classroom PBLO examples that were shared with you in the WebCT portion of this course. While the contextual information you will collect will not be as extensive as the list given here, you may want to look at the list in order to determine a sense of the diversity of the information which can be gathered. The list on this slide and the following ones shows the contextual information gathered for the lessons depicted in the argumentation PBLO. The earlier discussion assumes that the multimedia case study used in the PBLO is captured from a real situation. If your group decides to script a case study or a video, then you will be required to create the contextual information as well. For examples of this type of scenario, see the examples in um, the URL that's given in WebCT as well. So then going to the list of example uh, contextual um, information that was uh, gathered for the sample lesson, um, it includes the following. Brief descriptions of the statement of the topic and the learning objectives for the students, how many classes and time, and minutes the footage was shot, the context for each class, the lesson content and topics, the unit in which the depicted lessons are set, the expectations for the unit, background of the teacher to adopting this lesson approach if it's applicable. Statements in relation to, so this continues on with certain kinds of information, so statements in relation to resources used during the lesson, such as student handouts, assigned homework, etc. Learning objects and links to learn more about the lesson topic. Evaluation activities to be used, such as a rubric, test, performance tasks, etc. Samples of students' final work and assessments. Samples of student work throughout the unit. In addition to the lesson type of information, you can take a look at uh, additional information coming from um, further con context or further uh, expanding the scope of the context itself. The list on this slide is related to school, classroom, te classroom teacher, and the students depicted in the PBLO. So some of the school information um, deals with the number of students, the number of staff, etc. Perhaps a statement about the school educational philosophy, the socioeconomic status distribution of the students, so are they upper middle class, uh, etc. What about the location of the school? Is it rural? Is it urban? What about the geographic setting of that particular school? Um, is it private? Is it public? Is it Catholic? And perhaps you would want to include a short little video of the school community setting. Further classroom information could include a classroom layout with a seating chart, a video of classroom organization and layout, classroom facilities, in other words, listing of school, the lab equipment, the computers that are available, the books, etc. Some of the teaching information might include teaching philosophy and style, the years of teaching experience, what courses have been taught, what, which subjects, for how long. You might also include certifications, professional development courses that have been taken by the teacher, 
um, the education of the teacher, other relevant um, CV materials or information that can be found on a CV. Uh, student information for the class depicted might include number of students, their gender, their cultural mix, the class, social dynamic, and history. In other words, how long have they known each other? Are they friendly or are they cliquey? Um, other information, age, gender, race distribution, um, special learning and or behavioral characteristics of the group or individuals within the group, etc. So I hope you get a sense of the kind of information that should be included on page two of a PBLO. The theoretical lens then, going on to page three, Page three describes a theoretical lens with which to view the, the situation, the context that's depicted in the video-based case study. Without providing an extensive treatise or theory on why the theory is required, I will uh, try to provide a metaphor that hopefully will be helpful. The metaphor refers back to the constructivist learning theory that was discussed in an earlier session of this course. So here's the metaphor. When encountering any phenomenon of the f for the first time, humans cognitively try to match the phenomenon with any other similar phenomenon, or more precisely, constructs and thoughts that have been pro previously uh, been considered. In other words, we try to understand a new object or event by thinking it is like this or it is like that. Then we carry on through the assimilation accommodation processes in other words, humans can be thought of as creating theoretical constructs in their mind through which the world is understood based on these metaphors. Theory provides a means of understanding what is observed by the senses. The implications are that the theory precedes the observation and observation serves to modify the theory. Be careful when composing the information to be used in this area and it's important to not impose the theoretical ideas on the potential users of the PBLOs as imperatives. The theory should be offered as alternative explanations for the phenomenon described in the multimedia case. The learner's users should be given opportunities to build their own understandings of the entire PBLO, including the theoretical elements on page 3. How do you find a theory for page 3? The theoretical information provided on page 3 should be derived from the existing literature for the field in which the PBLO is situated, and it should be relevant to the context of the situation shown in the PBLO. This will require some time spent looking through journals and or other resources in the UOAT library for an appropriate theory which can be applied to the context described in the multimedia case. Some examples of theory that were applied in the argumentation PBLO used as examples in this course were performance-based assessment for the assessment of PBLOs and Tolman's model of argumentation for the argumentation PBLOs. A template which is usable for the development of your PBLO is available in the WebCT site for this course. It's produced in word format and can be filled in as you make decisions about the materials you will include in the PBLO. A filled in version of this template can be used as the basis for your PBLO page progress report assignment later on in the course. There is no relevant theory um, page for this particular video clip as that's primarily what we've been going through um, as we go through each of the pages in sequence. So that brings us to the synthesis questions, and the synthesis questions for this, pe this video clip are as follows. Number one, how does the contextual information help the user learner to find problems within the context of the situation as presented in the multimedia case study? Number two, how will you determine what type of contextual information is, will need to be gathered and or created for the PBLO that you will be creating? Number three, how does the theoretical information help the user learner to find problems within the context of the situation as presented in the multimedia case study? And number four, how is the learning instigated by a PBLO assisted with the inclusion of the theoretical information? 
In other words, why is the theory provided and why should the PBLO creator not impose the theory on the user or learner?